Welcome to Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. This is Skix of Skixie's Greater Shows coming back at you again. I do hope that opening theme music got stuck in your head. It'll keep reminding you to watch us every Monday. We have a special guest for us today. Just arrived from a strange land that we may discuss. Could you please introduce yourself, Joey? Hello, my name is Joey. Uh, my stage name is Eros de Flames, and I've been a performer and a dancer for the last uh, seven years or so. And um, it's something that I'm uh, very passionate about and pursuing uh, professionally. And uh, can you describe for the viewers who haven't been lucky enough to see you, what what, what is your act like? Yes, yes. So. Um, so I, my act is, my acts are usually very erotic, very sexy, um, uh, fun pieces because um, my stage name, Eros to Flames, is uh, based off of Greek mythology, which I am also very passionate about. And um, Eros is the god of sexual love and desire. And it's something that, uh, I just always, um, I don't know, I I connected with, but didn't feel like I could express that in, until my later years. And it's just, a, um, just being able to do that is very uh, rewarding in itself. But um, so my acts are very, uh, very sensual and very, um, uh, they pull you in and uh, we, I kind of take you into this, um, fantasy world that Eros uh, kind of controls and uh, is master over. And um, it's really fun. Um, I, I will say that one of my uh, favorite performance was in our Easter show uh, where Eros arrived dressed as Jesus uh, performing to WAP, um, which was uh, intensely fun, hugely sacrilegious, which was really the intent of the Easter show. Um, and can you tell us where you came from? Uh, I mean, I meant this week, but if you want to talk about your origin story too, you can do that as well. Oh yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll do a little bit of both. Okay. Um, so I grew up in Montana on a Native American reservation there. And um, there wasn't uh, a whole lot of dance opportunities for me um, until my family well, until I went to college and I started taking uh, a few dance classes here and there. And it was something I was always interested in, but hadn't really been able to pursue. Um, and and once I dipped my toe in, I was, I was just addicted. And I dropped out of school and pursued dance full time. And I started with fire dancing. And I went to pole dance and then burlesque. And now I do a little bit of clowning and drag and just all, all the weird stuff, all the fun things. <laughs> um, and uh, I just recently came from uh, Element 11, which is the regional Burning Man Festival here in Utah. And it is, um, it is its own magical world. And that's, uh, that's in and of itself, um, just an incredibly uh, supportive, um, welcoming, creative community that uh, I I really vibe with, and I just have so much fun. Could you uh, talk a bit about the intersection of the 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 greater burning community and the concept of weirdness? Oh well, it's that's that's what's so great about the Burning Man community because uh, one of the um, one of the one of the ten principles of it is uh, radical expression and being able to express yourself in literally whatever way 
you feel like and uh, not being, um, you know, not being penalized or, you know, like ostracized or, you know, whatever. And uh, just have people be so supportive and just like they want they want the weird because like that's part of why you come to Burning Man is to experience the weirdness and just like just totally immerse yourself in it and just like soak it in through your pores because as weird as you think you are anytime you go to a burn there's always somebody weirder and that is also just like a very empowering thought because it just allows you to be more free and more yourself and i found that this was my uh third element 11 and i've been to three burning mans and going again this year and uh i've just found that with every burn that i've attended i feel a little bit more myself and a little bit more comfortable with myself and expressing what that is <laughs> And uh, coincidentally, if I'm doing my math right, this episode will air pretty close to around Burning Man time. Oh, perfect. So uh, so you might be out on the playa when, when this hits hits the air. Um, what's the theme this year? Uh, the theme is um, Waking Dreams. Waking Dreams. That's a good so theme. It's a, ve- it's a very good theme. It's a very good theme. And uh, I can't wait to see what... Um, what, how all the artists interpret that. What is your experience of uh, being weird out here in consensual reality, though? From the point of view of the world at large, it is very easy to be outside on the edge, different from the norm, uh, to the point where I think everyone is, is a little weird in some way or another. Uh, but some of us grew up pretty weird uh, at least as far as the people around us were concerned and sometimes we had a hard time of it Um, what was your experience growing up with this weirdness within you I don't know how long it took it uh, for it to come out uh, in into the world but um, could you talk a bit about that yeah um, it actually uh, I was super super shy as a as a kid and I never, I always had social anxiety and just, um, I kept to myself a lot. I read a lot. I, um, I always had imaginary places that I would go to because I was usually running around the playground by myself, just like in my fantasy world. But, um, I, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable for a long time. Uh, expressing that because I just thought that um, uh, because the default world around us, you know, kind of like tells us what uh, what is acceptable and what um, you need to do, like the things that you need to check off to have a successful life. And um, I always wanted to, I always knew from a young age that I wanted to perform but I never really thought that it was going to be a, um, a legitimate possibility because like, how do you support yourself on that, you know? And like, you have to get a real job and all those things. And uh, so that's, so it wasn't until I started taking my first dance classes in uh, college and started learning this whole different, um, cause I always felt like I didn't, I didn't say the right things or I didn't know like the right words to say. And when I started taking these dance classes, it was like learning a whole different language that I'd been um, like just wanting to unlock for a long time. And I was able to express myself through my through my body movement. And the more dance classes that I took and the more uh, dance disciplines that I started um, cultivating then, uh, the more comfortable I got with um, uh, and confident in my own abilities and being like, you know, like I do have, I do have uh, valuable things to offer and I uh, have a specific point of view that is interesting and I, I can uh, create and uh, do these things. And it was through dance that, you know, you learn to first connect, like connect with the earth and then connect with yourself. And then you learn to connect through others through if you apply the principles that you learn in dance into your into real life 
And I've just found that like the more I push into my weirdness, then the more uh, like the more uh, support I get from my community because they they want to see that they want like they want to they want the weirdness and uh, it just feels so good to be able to um, ex just like really express myself and and just like not like yeah it's to be confident and um, and like happy going forward. I'm a thousand percent happier now pursuing dance and performance as as hard as it is and all the challenges that there are i'm a thousand percent happier than when i was going to school and it so seems to me like you've uh found it seems to me like you've found uh, a supportive community of of other weirdos is that is that fair to say 100 percent. yes how, how did you fall in with the these weirdos um just sort of drop out of the sky or, or how do you... it was it was all through circus um so i uh i was i started with musical theater and then just kind of like found my way into aerial arts and uh silks specifically and um i started taking these circus classes and i was just like oh like this is this is so much fun like such a great way to exercise and like in my body and just like also get out of my head because it's really meditative at the same time and I was just like this is this is so great and um the <laughs> the lady that uh taught me my first silks class is now one of my closest friends and we do circus shows together all the time and uh I eventually found my way to fire which was which is more more circus freaks and <laughs> Yeah. And um, I've just found that because all of these, like, that's what's so great about the circus is that um, it's very welcoming to anybody. And it's that's the whole purpose is that it's it's um, it's welcoming to all, all the freaks and all the all the people, all the misfits that don't feel like they belong. But like we we all do and we all jam together and can create these incredible shows and, you know, that people pay really good money for. And it's just uh you know, it's it's a very validating feeling when things that you originally thought um, were going like, or even possibly got you bullied, or you know, you thought you, you thought they were going to get you bullied, is now like something that society actively craves. And I think um, people talk about the American dream as, as about sort of very business and money related but i think there, uh, for me at least the american dream has always been the opportunity to run away and join the circus you know <laughs> uh, yeah and i feel really privileged that I've, I've run into people who um didn't so much run away and join the circus as much as invent a circus around around themselves you know um and and salt lake city is a surprisingly weirdo friendly place in in the middle of this vast desert um and I, I have found that the weirdos do tend to find each other where wherever you're at uh, oh yeah we we always seem to congregate <laughs> yeah and, and different kinds of weirdos you know i mean obviously like queer people tend to find queer people and you know people of color can find other people of color in the crowd but you know different kinds of outsiders and edge cases you know uh my friends are disability activists and 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 trans people and jugglers and 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 circus geeks and aerialists and blues singers and uh, you know any one of these would get you at least a little bit of side eye you know in temple square um <laughs> you know <laughs> um and they come together and 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 it can be beautiful it's not always beautiful sometimes it it's a little intense you know dramatic people can be dramatic yeah but that's um but yeah that's also uh that's, that's part of the art of it you know it reflects it reflects all um all acts of life and you know like it's, life isn't always pretty and sometimes the you know like those things need to be addressed too yeah yeah um 
if you could go back in time and give younger self, your younger self, uh, some advice with regards to how 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 to exist as as a weirdo in the world, um, what what do you think you'd like to hear? I would say that. Honestly, just just dance more. <laughs> just just dance more. Uh, it I didn't really start having a practice of just um, uh, just like uh, free dance every day, but just moving my body to at whatever. Uh, degree it needs to um it just it releases it releases a lot of things and it helps um it helps get into helps me get into that flow space because the more that the more i get out of my head and the more i get into that meditative flow space then um the more that uh i'm the more open i am to inspiration uh you know coming and it's just, uh, it's really like, uh, like a lot of things, it's really just about listening and, um, and just, uh, yeah, like having that, that quiet space or however, like you get into that inspired, uh, space, like whatever your process is, is just, um, I would actively try, if you haven't found that yet, I would find the way how you do that because that will help you the most <laughs> and i wish that i had just like instead of like focusing i used to be focused on form and on tricks that i was hitting and you know like how, how much applause i got during and not like during a show and things like that and it's like no 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 just focus on really creating pieces that i have fun with because those are the ones that the audience love the most you, you mentioned uh, flow state. Could you talk a bit about what that is for folks unfamiliar with the term? Yeah, so it's just uh, this um, state of mind that you get to where, um, you know, whether that's like, whether you're painting or you're, you're skateboarding or you're dancing or, you know, um, doing whatever you're doing. And it's just when you are focused on a task and getting out of your head and into your body, and just letting letting it flow. And like, you're not concerned with how good it looks. You're not concerned with the mistakes you're making. You're just going and just enjoy, enjoy like you're just enjoying the, the journey <laughs> and just like seeing where you end up and not, um, not judging. And not when, judging. When, when the flow state hits, it can feel really magical sometimes like Sometimes you can do things in that moment that you didn't know you could do. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. There, uh, especially... there... Go ahead. Oh, no. It, it, um, just, yeah. Especially with um, with dance, then um, I'm a very visual learner. So, you know, like I'll watch somebody and then I'll get into a flow state later and I'll find myself being able to uh, recreate moves that I didn't necessarily um, understand before. And yeah, a lot of that is just, you know, watching, learning, listening, and just being observant, um, you know, and uh, those are, I think, really great skills that any performer uh, should, should try and have. It's uh, a bit less artistic, at least on the surface, but there's a whole branch of sports psychology on, on finding the flow state. Um, because uh, not only an artistic, but like all kinds of performance and activity, um, riding, um, you know, golf or bowling or, or uh, running or dance or juggling. I mean, people experience these moments, um, public speaking, singing, just about every endeavor of, of humanity. You, you, people sometimes experience this flow state and um in in my reading in 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 the sports field sometimes they get a little bit obsessed with the idea of hitting flow state to the point where they're 
kind of working against themselves because like if you become like I've, I've got to get in the flow state to perform to do it right you know um that's kind of counter counterproductive um do you do you find there are things that fairly consistently for you bring you into the the flow state yeah you're right in that uh you definitely can't force it because of yeah if you're forcing it then it's just it's not gonna work um but uh, to what you just asked, um, I was just, uh, for me, then I'm, uh, I spin poi, uh, as my, as my most favorite fire spinning tool. And, um, I just, I just have a pair of poi that I grab and I just start spinning them and I practice a few moves and then, you know, just put on some music and just, uh, just have some free flow for a while. And, you know, if that's not doing it, then, um, you know, like sometimes it's just like, you have to, you have to create the space, whether that's like, you know, like I need to relax. So I need to go take a bath or, you know, like I need to like, I need to do some yoga or some stretches and like roll or like roll out my body or, you know, like whatever, like whatever that is. And, you know, like kind of take care of yourself because, um, it's just finding finding those triggers because you know you can't be you can't be all stressed and tensed out and worried about a performance. You just have to you just have to uh, be confident in the process and let it let it come. And you know whether that's uh, like putting on a podcast and just like sitting down and just you know like um, you know sometimes like I I found that I've been able to get into the flow state by I do figure modeling and uh, just by sitting still and um, literally doing nothing, your uh, your mind is able to to um, to work a lot differently because you don't have all of these things, all of, you know, all of these stimuli going on around you, and you just kind of you have, like you're giving yourself time to think. And I think a lot of a lot of time times uh just yeah like we just feel so rushed all the time that we don't take the time to just like sit and just like be quiet and just let things come you know whether that whatever that is i haven't done figure modeling in a long time but i do remember it being very meditative it's super meditative uh, yeah. i mean e even the 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 rapid sketch you know like you got 30 seconds and then new pose but the, the really long pose, uh, you know, you could be sitting there for 30 minutes, you know, and and really the only way to hold a pose for 30 minutes is to kind of blank your mind and, and kind of just relax into it because any small amount of effort will start to multiply itself the longer you sit and you're going to wind up cramping up or um, I always get an itchy nose. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it's just like, yeah, like just taking a breath and just, yeah, like relaxing your shoulders, let your neck relax and just like, yeah, just like sitting into it versus trying to like trying to force it. Right, right. And uh, yeah, it's just, just like a lot of things, you can't force it. You gotta, you gotta let, you gotta let it flow. <laughs> Words to live by. Um, Keeping in mind, it, it's going to be uh, a little while before this goes to air. Do you have any any big projects or, or movements coming up that you'd like people to know about? Uh, so I have, um, I, I believe it is August, this mid-August when I'm doing a uh, fire and aerial circus show in Pleasant Grove um, with... Uh, is kind of, is going to be um, Celeste and uh, Circus Stereo kind of coming together to make a show, and that's going to be really fun. And then at the end of August, uh, the last week of August, I will be at Party Man, and that is something that I am extremely looking forward to. Do you have any um, like dream gigs or shows you'd you'd like to do one day? Oh, I would, I would just love to be on any any huge um any huge stage 
in Vegas, but uh, I don't know if you know who the fuel, uh, the fuel girls are, mm-hmm. but they're this traveling fire act. And I would just, they're, they're all these beautiful women spitting, like spitting fire and doing all of these crazy, crazy fire things. And I would just love to share the stage with them and do incredible high end uh, pyrotechnic slash fire acts and go on tour with them because I, yeah. Or, or if, or I would go on some kind of like tour, like whether that's on a cruise or something as a fire performer is like my, that's my biggest goal right now. Let's put it out into the universe. It's going to happen. I'm going, yeah, it's going to happen. And you know, maybe one day this podcast will become wildly popular and, you know, someone will say, Hey, that guy, that one right there that's the one i want <laughs> you never know you never know you never sure. know so cool thank you so much uh for joining us thank that's, you okay. that's the time we've got so friends at home this has been here comes the weirdo parade this week's weirdo has been lovely and next week's weirdo will be just as much fun we are about to hit the theme song again i hope it gets stuck in your head and it reminds you to watch us again next week. Thank you. God bless you all. God save the king. It's, it's the work of the devil. You feel better after you drink this. Grog. 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 I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Come down to that. Yeah, oh. Thank you. (laughs) All right, thanks. Easy as that. You did great. Oh, that was so fun. Yeah.